Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 19 of the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode where today we're here back for the US Grand Prix and yeah heading into this weekend obviously if you missed out on yesterday's video make sure you click the eye at the top right hand side of your screens there'll be a link to the full playlist as well but yeah that race was pretty damn insane it's safe to say one of the crazier races we've had so far this season yeah definitely Definitely would recommend going back and checking it out if you did miss it. But heading though to the US Grand Prix this weekend, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get clarification on whether we are going to see a change to the engine powertrain side of things ready for Season 2. If we get confirmation on that, what I'm going to do is probably shut down all three of the other facilities because I don't know for sure if you shut down the powertrain facility, whether you'll then be able to actually sort out the parts ready for next season but anyway having a look though at the performance chart obviously still incredibly close we have now jumped back ahead of Haas though as we have had our last ERS upgrade on the car we managed to get the magnetic compound in so you can see now we've actually got the third best engine in Formula 1 only behind Mercedes and Ferrari there as you can see both Renault the supplier and McLaren both down in the bottom half of the field chassis wise we're still a way off but not too far off everyone by the looks of it so we need to focus on that a bit more and then in the aero side of things we're again sort of the lower end of the mid pack as well so there's plenty more work to be done at the moment but obviously we need to focus on what rule changes we're going to see ready for season two but i think we're ready then to dive into it let's head to kota round 19 of the season only four races to go. It really, really has gone by very, very quickly. Let's dive into this. So another good haul of points on the board after free practice. Sadly, we still haven't had any confirmation about whether we're going to see a rule change for next season. So I'm very, very worried with sort of two rounds to go. Uh, we're certainly going to get all these rules announced for next season that then every team is going to be scrambling to try and get sorted. But I mean, we've got about 2,000 R&D points, you know, sort of in, sat in the back pocket. Uh, ready for if it's needed but then you run that horrible risk of the other way around if we don't get a rule change we're then a little bit further off the pace than we intended to be and then we'll have to just put a couple of massive upgrades on the car as well it really is very very strategic at the moment you can see we've got just emails about this weekend uh, i don't know if i absolutely love this track it's silverstone the Asmarina mix with Istanbul. Uh, okay, not really relevant to what we want to talk about, I'll be honest, Jeff. But yeah, in terms, though, of the R&D, still no updates. We've got 2,225 points, which would basically be two big upgrades on the car. If we're able to get it sorted, we'd probably go with an aero and a chassis upgrade for us. But having a look at the R&D, I just wonder how many we need. Probably, a, yeah, in the region of about three, 4,000 to be able to get all these parts sorted. So we might end up with enough R&D points by the end of the season, but we just don't know at the moment. What we do know is it's time for qualifying here for the US Grand Prix. Here we are then at the US Grand Prix, ready for qualifying. I really do quite enjoy this circuit, I'll be honest, on one lap pace. Race pace is a little bit different around this track. But yeah, let's see if we can try and get into the Q2 for the first time since Singapore. Obviously, we did have a couple of reasons why we weren't able to over the last couple of race weekends. But we really, really just need to try and get back into Q2. Start making it a consistent occurrence again. In the late stages of this season. Down in towards the S's for the first time. Can we keep it nice and tidy? It's so satisfying when you get it hooked up through here. But horrible when you don't. That's been okay, I suppose. Coming down then into Sector 3. We're about a tenth off Roman Grosjean at the moment. But Sector 3 does seem to be a little bit stronger for us around this track. As we try and get out in towards the Turkey S section. Obviously completely pinned nowadays. It's actually crazy just how tight you can keep it as well. Completely pinned through there. Try and open up the penultimate corner. That was not the line we needed. A little bit of track limits warning there. One more corner to go though. Up towards the finish line. A bit of a sloppy final sector. And it's P19 at the moment. Four tenths off our teammate. But there's definitely a lot more time to find. We go again. 
We really, really do ideally need a Q2 appearance here. I'll be honest. We need to find about half a second if we want to make it out of this first qualifying session. Trying to get the power down as best as possible. Let's go then for another attacking lap here at the Circuit of the Americas. We need to just keep it nice and tidy. And we haven't done that through turn one. Big lockup. We do get somewhat close to the apex. And actually, pretty much even with our delta as we head down the hill. In towards the S's once more. Not too sure why I short shifted up into eighth gear there. That just won't help the rotation through the corners. Try and take as much curb as you dare. Fairly tidy run. But green there, you can really ride that curb as much as possible. We are using close to realistic coach track limits. As best as possible here. Down into the hairpin. Try and get it. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin there. Back in. Try to rotate round us. But we do get a good run. Out onto the back straightaway. So we're going to be already about two tenths up. On our previous lap here. So that's exactly what we need. In towards sector three. Break just at the 100 meter board. Try and get it slowed down. It's just so difficult to try and get the traction out of so many corners around here. Try and really concentrate through this section. Like three tenths up, so we are still finding a little bit of time. If we get these final few corners nailed, that could put us very, very close. Try and keep it tidy. Fifth gear there. You can see we just gained a little bit of time on the exit. Final corner. Try and get the power down. It's going to be about a four tenth improvement, but it's not good enough. For a tenth off Magnussen. And that is just going to be out in Q1 here for the US Grand Prix. To be honest, with how OP the AI are at the moment, I'll take only being a tenth of my teammate Jordan King. But not what we were really after, I'll be honest. So, official confirmation then that we are out in Q1. Magnussen actually improved in the end. So, we were a good three tenths off getting through in to Q2 there. Pierre Gasly got knocked out. Right at the last moment. But yeah, only, what, 24 thousandths of my teammate Jordan King. He's, he, all the AI seem to be so good on qualifying trim. And then you get to the races. And they just seem to struggle a little bit more at the moment. So hopefully, that's a good sign for things to come this weekend. But you just feel sorry for Williams at the moment. They're, what, eight tenths off anyone else. I really don't know what's happened to them. But yeah, Gasly, Roman Grosjean, both of us, and both Williams out in Q1 then. I'll take solace in the fact, you know, we're focusing on the future rather than now in Formula 1. But yeah, let's dive in then here for the US Grand Prix. Welcome once again then to the United States Grand Prix here in the magnificent city of Austin. It was here in 2018 that Kimi Raikkonen delighted the world by winning for the first time in 114 races. There's always a record to be broken, so what I wonder is in store for us today. We're racing today then in Travis County, Texas, where 20 corners and speeds of up to 200 miles an hour await us on this magnificent racetrack. It's 60% full throttle with plenty of good opportunities to pass, especially through the two DRS zones into turn one and at the end of the long back straight into turn 12. What a race we have in store today. And a warm welcome, of course, to my co-commentator here today, someone of tremendous experience and insight. It's the man himself, Anthony Davidson. Well, it was a really impressive lap in qualifying to get pole position, but are they going to be able to hold on to the lead into the first corner with so many quick starters around them? And, of course, it's looking very close here today. A lot's going to be riding on those first few corners, and then the question becomes who can manage their tyres so they're in a better position to push hard towards the end. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Ricardo, Sergio Perez, and Sainz, Stroll, Norris, Hamilton, and Esteban Ocon, Kvyat, Raikkonen, Max Verstappen, and Giovinazzi, Albon, Magnussen, Pierre Gasly, and Jordan King. Mr. Monaco, Grosjean, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. See if you can gain some early places on the first lap. This will help us to get another points finish. So here we are then on the grid, ready for the US Grand Prix. And actually a few surprises there. Bottas 
has got a prime chance to build himself up a big, big title lead this weekend as Hamilton's out of position and both the Red Bulls have got grid penalties. They're starting outside the top 10, so he's probably going to be mo mostly focused, yeah, on the Ferrari cars around him. And, yeah, I'm sure he's looking to try and get another win on the cards this weekend. In terms of strategy, though, it's a dry to wet race. We've had two changeable condition Grand Prix so far, and they've both been pretty crazy. So maybe, just maybe, we'll see the same sort of story here today. In terms of strategy, normally tyre wear isn't too bad at the Circuit of the Americas. So what I'm probably going to try and do is go soft mediums, and then obviously just try and take those mediums. If it gets wet enough at the end of the Grand Prix, uh, then obviously we'll have to make the changeover as well. But fingers crossed, maybe, just maybe, we, you know, perhaps it'll work out for us, perhaps it won't. You know, we've been very, very lucky with the strategy calls this season. So today we will have to wait and see. But I think we're ready then here on the grid at the Circuit of the Americas. The team told us make places into turn one. So we've got to be aggressive here. Let's see what we can muster up. Ready then, on the grid, round 19 of the season here at Kota. It's five red lights, and it is lights out, and away we go. A lot of wheel spin. Jordan gets off to an absolute flyer. However, we have not had a good getaway. Down in towards turn one, like the team said, we're going to have to be brave. Try and not run into the side of my teammate Jordan King there, as I think that was Gasly trying to turn in on us. A lot of wheel spin. Off the X there as we head down in towards the S's for the first time. Still side by side with the Alpha Tauri. No. He tries to park it in front of us there and just about holds on. I don't think, by some miracle, we didn't pick up any front wing damage there. I've got no idea how we survived that. As we're now going to try and send it around the outside of the Alpha Tauri. He does give us the room that time round. And we go full send back up the inside. Anything you can do, mate. So can I. As he's going to try and get the run down the hill. Everyone just constantly cheering up. We both have to go around the outside of my teammate Jordan King and Gasly. He's absolutely sent it. He's now up the inside of Alex Albon as we head down the back straightway. And yeah, poor Jordan King's lost two places there by trying just to avoid incidents around him. Gonna try and make it three wide. Might be able to have a look up the inside of the pair of them. We've got to be aggressive still and we've done it. A bit of P16 of the start then of the US Grand Prix. That is exactly what we need is, as I think, I just spotted on the minimap a Renault in the lead of this Grand Prix. Is that Daniel Ricciardo in the lead of this race? Obviously, he's already won one race this season back at Singapore, but he started like fourth on the grid, didn't he? How has he managed to pull off that up into the lead of the Grand Prix? We'll get confirmation in just a minute. And yes, Daniel Ricciardo into the lead of the US Grand Prix. Can Renault get their second win of the season? Their boss has has dropped back down the order off the start quite clearly so not what he needed at the start of this race but I mean he got pole by half a second so I'm sure it is not over just yet for us though we're focusing on trying to get past Magnussen oh Magnussen a bit of a mistake there obviously this has home Grand Prix so they'll be wanting a good result here it hasn't really been a season to remember for the US outfit but yeah hopefully for them they can get a good result here at Kota but not looking too great at the start but I mean we're all just sort of worried about when that weather is going to come in here we go then might be able to try and get a bit of a run now on K-Mag they don't seem to have the best top speed down at the Haas facilities this weekend we're not gaining too rapidly though on him I'll be honest might be able to try and have a bit of a look up the inside though big send but we slick the stamp and that has been sent up into P15 of the Grand Prix. Next up is our good old friend Antonio Giovinazzi. On to lap 5 then. We're now all over the back of Giovinazzi. We've seen Alfa Romeo very, very strong down the straight. But I've been watching Gio for a couple of laps. He was a bit cautious into one. He tried to turn in us that time around. But the team are happy with the overtake. So we're going to P14 of the Grand Prix. And yeah, it just seems like the AI all have a few little weaknesses and nuances here and there around this circuit that it might just take us a lap or so to work out and then we can really try and pounce at the moment like always race pace in this car seems to be much better than qualifying trim the AI just seems to be absolutely on it over one lap but anyway next up then Raikkonen as you can see a big big train starting to form from what like P5 backwards oh yellow flags out who's struggling it's one of the Red Bulls I think it's Verstappen out of yet another Grand Prix there. So two retirements in a row for Max. Are we going to see a safety car? Yes, we are. 
Keep it positive to avoid a penalty. Slow down. Maintain positive delta. That Check really does throw a spanner in the works. What the team's saying? They're saying pit for medium still as normal. I'm tempted to dive it in now onto a set of hard compounded tyres and see if we can drag them to the end of this race, if we need to. Obviously, it's that horrible gamble because mediums might be a lot quicker and the rain might come. But we're going to go onto hards and see if we can drag them as far as possible. Everyone in front of us is in, however. What where are these tyres at? You know what? We're going to stay out. I've, I may have already missed the pit box anyway, but Raikkonen stayed out. We're going to do the same then. We're going to take track position and hope that these guys all hold each other up. Bottas started on a set of mediums. So everyone around us, pretty much, has done the alternate strategy by myself and Raikkonen here. Ricardo is still going to be up in P4, but we may as well take some track space at the moment and then see what happens because those guys all on another set of softs means they're going to have to pit again anyway, so as long as we don't lose out too many places, we might have gained out of this. So, getting ready to go green then once again here from Kota. Only a two-lap safety car, so certainly not the longest one in the world, but we're going to have a lot of quick cars behind us. Ricardo, effective net leader in this Grand Prix, or maybe Bottas is now again. You never really know. We've then got Leclerc, Perez, Sainz. I think that's the other Mercedes of Hamilton a little bit further back. As well as Bottas, he really, really does want to get on with this by the looks of it. Out of the final couple of corners, we're obviously going to have cold rubber as well to have to deal with. As well as older rubber. The AI very, very good on their restarts. Let's see if we can try and get a nice, clean getaway. We want to try and be looking past Raikkonen. So hopefully he can act as a bit of a buffer from the guys behind. But we are green flag racing once again. A bit of a snag break in towards turn one. And yeah, Ricardo, he looks ready to pounce, so I'll be honest, as we head down into the S's. Hopefully, we should be able to hold on through here. A good way to get the tyres back up to temperature as we take a little bit too much kerb through the first part there. But yeah, tyres feel alright again then. Let's just get our head down and see if we can try and get past Raikkonen first. Rain is forecast in just over 10 minutes time. As the team now confirming, Rain will be at the track in just 10 minutes as Ricardo goes full send. A little bit of contact with the Renault's rear quarter, but that's okay. We are actually going to get the run off the exit on Daniel Ricardo here, so we might be able to look straight back past him in this Grand Prix. Can we try and keep the nose up the inside? Battle of the late breakers. We're ever so slightly later, and we hold on to P3 then, so clearly... These tyres not so destroyed just yet, but now we run the horrible risk as Raikkonen there makes a bit of a mistake. We're going to go up the inside of the Alfa Romeo. Yeah, now we've got to run the risk of whether... Oh my lord. As soon as we make the move work, Raikkonen gets straight back past us. As I was saying, now we run the risk of whether these tyres are going to be able to make it to the dry period. Oh, the wet period even. As Ricardo tries to have a look up the inside, Raikkonen... Straight into the pit lane though, so clearly he's had enough of his tyres and we probably shouldn't be holding up these guys for too much longer. I'm sure Raikkonen, uh, Ricardo even, is probably going to be looking past us very, very quickly in this race. As Bottas, this has all worked out well for him, he has bolted it off the restart there. Right, Ricardo up the inside, he's going to be able to make the move work down into the S's maybe? Yeah, surely he is. There we go, Ricardo straight up back then into P2 and now he... He's probably going to be hunting down Valtteri Bottas. As now, the question for us is, will this rain arrive quick enough? Leclerc having a look up the inside. We accidentally slammed the door there, buddy. We just don't have enough grip at the moment. But we've got to try and hold on to these tyres for as long as possible. Already struggling with temps, actually. As Leclerc up the inside again. We are just getting absolutely swamped there. A little bit of contact. It's going to be a drag race off the corner. And yeah, we can't really fight the Ferrari power here. We're pretty even, actually, saying that. We might be able to have a bit of a look around the outside, but we don't really want to be fighting these guys at the moment. Leclerc gets up the inside, up into P3 of the Grand Prix once more, as we just need to focus on our tyres. Oh my god, way too much wheel spin out onto the back straight there. Apologies, Sergio Perez. I wasn't actually intending to go for that, but Perez flies past us. Now the DRS has been enabled. There's not going to be much we can do to defend from the AI. But yeah, these tyres are really, really going off at the moment. It's that horrible thing now of if we pit, we'll have lost out on so much time. But if we don't, we might still lose out on a lot of time. 
Oh, Bottas dies into the pit lane as the team want us in very, very soon. So we've gone further on softs than Bottas has been able to on medium tyres there. So that's quite interesting to see. But yeah, we're probably going to have to dive it in very, very shortly in this Grand Prix. Let's have a quick weather update then. We think we may see some rain. ETA is about 15 minutes. Oh, great. Like the best tire for now. So the team then saying that the weather's now further away again, which is nice. So we're going to pit onto another set of the probably go mediums in all honesty, and then try to take those to the wet period. The only positive I can think of now is maybe these guys are going to have to pit again as sights up the inside. Come on, give us some room, buddy. But yeah, we're going to have to slot in behind the McLaren. We've got Hamilton who's making big, big gains on the pair of us. We're going to be momentarily three wide there. Just look at the straight line speed of the Mercedes. That is just unfair to have to deal with. Hamilton mugs off two Renault-powered cars in one go but yeah at the moment it's all a little bit crazy we're just going backwards though which is something i'll be honest we're not too used to in this career mode normally we can at least try to hold our own but we've taken another gamble and so far it sadly doesn't appear to be paying off we'll dive it in at the end of this lap we have set it up as mediums yes we have don't want any front wing changes just in case into the pits we go. Just about get it slowed down in time as well. So, yeah. Now, we're probably going to be out, I think, at the very rear of the field. Bottas is down in 20th place as well. So, not been a good start to his day. But, there's a long way to go here from Kota. And the everlasting threat of rain might shake things up just a little bit more. 2.7 seconds stop. We're going to be back down in 21st. Let's get our head down and focus. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. Oh, Ocon and Vettel then into the pit lane, as well as Magnussen. So we are going to make up a few spots once again in this Grand Prix. We're going to be back up into P18 of the race. Pleasantly surprised by that, as they've also gone on to medium. So they might be trying to go to the end if the rain doesn't appear. But now we've got a couple of cars to fight again, because I'm sure Seb will be all over the back of us very quickly. We've got a few more cars then diving it in to the pit lane. So maybe... Maybe just maybe this strat hasn't worked out so badly for us. And we might still have got a bit of a free pit stop. Well, not quite a free pit stop. But yeah, maybe these guys trying to claim a free pit stop hasn't worked out so well for them. We might be back up into the points of this Grand Prix. We're going to come right back out in P12. As you can see, Hamilton's just there. So we haven't really lost any time whatsoever to these guys over these last couple of laps. Which is reassuring for us. So there might still be a chance of points here. So the team just saying the rain is just a few laps away then. So it's all getting a little bit spicy as Latifi dives into the pit lane. So we should now be up into the points once again of the US Grand Prix. We get very, very loose and lively at the final corner. We're going to be back up into P7 of the Grand Prix. So this is working out all right at the moment. We've got Ricardo just in front, who's still on an older set. Bottas further up the road, who I think is on an older set of the soft compound as well. So if they can make it to the wet period, they're looking very, very good. If not, however, they look very, very screwed. There we go. Raikkonen now into the pits. The end of lap 17. We've got 11 laps to go of this Grand Prix. And now I'm sure we're going to see Perez and Hamilton absolutely bolt it away from me. The next big question then is what is championship leader Bottas going to do? He's rolled the strategy dice this weekend. Trying to make a bit of a gamble out of it. But will it pay off? And will it get him a few extra points over his rival Hamilton? Oh, Seb getting a monumental run down into the hairpin. He's probably going to be able to make the move work before we even get to the DRS zone there as we try to get the switch back on him. See if we can try and get the hammer down out onto the back straight. It's going to once again be a drag race with a Ferrari-powered car this weekend. But once again, said Ferrari-powered car just has a little bit more top end. We're going to keep the nose there just about. Seb is going to give us the room. And we do end up holding on to it, rather surprisingly. But just look how grey and gloomy this track has got in just the space of a couple of laps. That rain is coming, and when it does, I think it's going to fall very, very quickly. Lap 20, there's not going to be much we can do to defend from Sebastian. Straight up the inside goes the Ferrari car. And yeah, without some DRS assistance from Hamilton, we're basically just going to have to slot back down into P7 of this race, but still 
The question remains, are we going to get some rain? End of lap 20, though. Bottas has finally had to dive it in. Tries he might to make this strategy work. He is going to do he is gonna have to dive in. So we're going to be back up then into P6 of the Grand Prix. As there appears to be a little bit of rain on the visor. Has Bottas made the wrong call? I mean, I think he's only been on soft tyres so far this Grand Prix. So we might have to pit again. If I'm not mistaken. No, he was on mediums at the beginning, wasn't he? So that's not something he needs to worry about. But the rain is finally starting to fall here at Kota. Now, when are we going to need to pit? If we do. So on to lap 23 then. Six laps to go here from Kota. The track is definitely getting a little bit slippery at the moment. The team have just warned us that the tyres are going to start going off as well. So it really does beg the question... Of if it's going to get wet enough. Obviously quite an undulating circuit. So drainage is quite well done around this track. But it's just now about a case of trying to hang on in there. If it gets wet enough, it gets wet enough. And we pit onto Inters and then the whole field sort of gets neutralised again. If not, we've just got to try and hang on in and make these mediums work. I mean the wear on them up towards 40% is not ideal. But the temps are alright still. Obviously, one of the advantages of the Inters. So the team definitely saying not ready for Inters just yet. Once again, strategy coming in in the dying stages of these Grand Prix. It's happened so many times in recent weeks. And it is brilliant to see on F1 2020. We might end up just having to try and hold on to these mediums to the flag. You never know for sure. to go then the team are warning us that the rain is just going to get heavier and heavier in the dying stages of this race but we just don't know what to do at the moment i don't think the track's quite wet enough yet but i don't think it's far away and if the ai don't pit then we might see a bit of a situation like suzuka where we're gaining time but just not enough to negate the disadvantage however if they do pit do we stay out and pray that it works in our favor i just do not know at this time as soon as I say that, Jeff now saying it might be worth making the switch. I'll see what the AI do and make a decision from there. I don't know. I feel like if we moved on to Inters, they'd just start locking up a bit into the braking zones. To be honest, I'm tempted to just try and take the gamble and drag these mediums to the flag. If we score points, we score points. If we don't, we don't at the end of the day. Let's just see what happens here. Charles Leclerc stays out. Everyone ahead of us is staying out. So it's not worth it then. On to most of the AI. Are we going to see him have to make a really, really late call in this Grand Prix? Three laps to go here from Kota. We've now got Bottas all over the back of us. We need to try and hang on in here. DRS has now been disabled as Bottas is trying to look past us. So the game now reckons the wets are the times to be on as Bottas... Tries to understeer out in towards us. Well, I say tries to. He accidentally did. Can't imagine he managed to do that on purpose. But, yeah. Two laps to go here from Kota. And everyone is just crawling along. Are we now going to see the AI dive in? Charles Leclerc, no. He opts to stay out again as we got 15, 16 seconds to Sainz further back. Starting to wonder whether it is worth it. And just see. Because we probably won't lose out on many points otherwise. Ricardo stays out again. And so does everyone else. So actually, we're going to make the call. We're going to gonna, we're going to come in and hope that this works out well for us. We may as well always try and go for what the AI don't at the moment. We haven't got much to lose out on. Into the pits we come. Hopefully, we'll still be out towards the front of that train. If not, then we should be able to just walk past them here. I mean, even if we can only get back to Kvyat, then we haven't really lost out anything in this Grand Prix. We may as well just take the gamble and hope that this pays off. Green flags, come on, get in gear. So we are going to come out actually in this train. But we should be a whole lot quicker. Out of the pit lane we come. We're going to be back down in about P14. Try and get them working again. There's one of the Renaults. That was Ocon, tries to turn on in us. Let's see how much extra grip we've got over these guys then. Round the outside of Magnussen. Straight through turn two. We might be in for once again a bit of a crazy end to a Grand Prix here. Look at the extra grip we've got over Stroll. We've got to make sure, though, we don't make mistakes like we did last time out here because now there is a good chance, again, of some good points here. We just can't afford to run into the back of any of the AI despite the extra grip that we've got. 
Let's see if we can try and get past Album here. Yes, easily. Look how easy we're able to put down the power. Try and have a look at the inside of Lando. Sight's turns in on us, though. We weren't actually trying to get the nose there. I'll be honest. But just look at the traction we're able to get on the exit of the corner as well. Should be able to get past him as we head down the back straightaway. The gap to Kvyat, though. 15 seconds, which I think is a bit optimistic to try and close down in one lap. But at the inside of Sight's... We'll give it our best shot nonetheless. The power down onto the final lap. The gap now is just down to 10 seconds, so this might still be possible. Try and close up to Danny Kvyat. We'll ride on board, obviously, like we always do throughout this final lap. But I'm just going. Maybe if this was one lap longer. I mean, we always say that, but the AI probably would have pit as well. I can't help but always wonder how much more we could have got out of these Grand Prix. Look at that. Another two seconds out of Kvyat through Sector 1. The gap now down to 8 seconds. Can we just pull off an absolute worldie here and see if we don't lose out on anything whatsoever? Gap down to 7 seconds. 6 seconds. It's just absolutely tumbling at the moment. As we can see Kvyat there struggling through the hairpin. Might just be able to close up to him at the end of this Grand Prix. We're going to use all of our rich revs, all of our ERS Absolutely, obviously, no reason to try and hold on to those. Gap now down to five seconds with just a sector to go here from the US Grand Prix. Once again, strategy has really, really come into it. And although we might not gain very much, it's still always just a bit of fun. You know, you like to put on a bit of a show as well as we head now down into sector three. The gap now below four seconds here. Kvyat still struggling. The track's just getting wetter and wetter. Charles Leclerc is going to come home, though. For the US Grand Prix victory, the first race win in quite a few races, I think maybe since Spa for Charles Leclerc. Ricardo gets his second podium of the season, but look at that. The gap to Kvyat is still coming down. We've got one more corner to go. We're going to be able to get this, I think, up the inside of the Alpha Tori, so we never even lose out anything in the end. And if it had been one lap longer, who knows what we could have been able to get more out of that. But 12 seconds in one lap. We were able to pull out there at the end. What an end to that race. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Despite the best efforts of our championship leader, that lead has taken a bit of a knock today. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. The current championship leaders still hold top spot, but that gap is getting smaller. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. So there we are then, the end of the US Grand Prix. And it is Charles Leclerc who takes home the race victory as well as the fastest lap bonus point there. 26 points probably puts him back into title contention there. Ricardo, he led so much of that Grand Prix. It was absolutely crazy to see the pace. Once again, coming up from the Renault man there to finish up in P2. Probably, probably, yeah, would have deserved the race victory. But a second podium for the Australian there of the year. With Sergio Perez as well getting his second podium of the year, obviously, after that crazy Spanish Grand Prix early on in the season there for P3. Hamilton does take a few points out of his main title rival and teammate Valtteri Bottas, but probably not as many as was possible. But considering he started eight places behind him, I'm sure he's not going to be complaining all too much there. As Seb splits the Mercedes ahead of Bottas 
and myself there. We were able to get Kvyat by seven tenths at the end of the day there. And had that race been one more lap, there was probably a podium on the cards. I'll be honest there. We definitely could have had a whole lot more from that Grand Prix there. Kvyat in eighth, Sainz and then Albon rounding out the top ten. So one point for Red Bull. What a torrid time they are having in Formula 1 at the moment. They're lucky they've solidified P3 overall because their race, recent race results have really not shown the pace of that car. They exceed Norris, Stroll, Magnussen, Ocon, Gasly, Geo, King, Grosjean, Raikkonen, George Russell and Latifi round out the finishes there. With Max Verstappen, two DNFs in a row, really not what he needs at this stage of the year there. Title-wise, Charles Leclerc moves himself back up into P2 in the championship battle. They're 20 points behind Valtteri Bottas. So it's still all to play for with three rounds to go of this season. Any of those three drivers could still win it. I mean, Seb still are, it's still mathematically in with a chance as well. But I think he needs a bit more of a miracle at the moment. The other swappers, though, Perez with that brilliant result moves himself up into P9 of the championship. And Ricardo only five points off Albon. That could be doable at the end of the championship here. Kvyat, though, with a couple of really good results recently, moves himself up into P17 ahead of Giovinazzi. There are no other movers in the Drivers' Championship. Constructors-wise, though, no changes there either. Mercedes still on top by just 34 points over Ferrari after they made some good inroads this weekend there. Renault looking a bit safer for P4 altogether, but McLaren, ourselves, and Racing Point still very, very much locked into battle over fifth place altogether then. And then Alpha Tauri, very, very close now to Alfa Romeo as well. But yeah, that'll do us then for this weekend's US Grand Prix. Thank you all so much for watching. I wonder just how many more insane races we're going to get between now and the end of the year. But yeah, we will be back tomorrow though, ready for the Mexican Grand Prix. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.